I believe you get one of my children in your jail here. How dare you walk into my office and pull a gun on me? What happens if you plug a gun barrel? Well, a number of things can happen, and it depends on many variables. Literally nothing to a catastrophic failure can happen. Guns can get a bulge in the barrel, or they can literally blow apart from the trapped gases that are normally expelled along with a projectile from the muzzle of a gun. These gases can be so powerful on their own that even shooting blanks can pose a danger to anything close to and in front of a muzzle. Obstructing the normal release of these gases can certainly be deadly. This is one reason why firearm inspections are taken so seriously. Name? No, it's Judge. Dirt in the rear sight aperture. Pass revoked. Of course, what is actually plugging a barrel can make a big difference on the outcome. The tip of a finger, for example, is likely to be completely blown off and unlikely to damage the firearm. That gun had gone off and it blown right up in the face. Well, now, it wouldn't have done my finger a hell of a lot of good either, would it? Though this isn't to say small and relatively soft objects can't pose significant dangers if lodged in a barrel. The old carrot in a barrel, for example. This might be enough to destroy a firearm in reality. There are countless gun barrels that have been destroyed by mud or even snow packed in them, which can literally peel a barrel like a banana, or indeed injure the shooter if and when the gun explodes. Brace yourself for immediate disintegration. You shouldn't fool around with firearms, shorty. This thing just might be loaded, you know. It should also be expected that if a gun were to explode from an obstruction, much of that explosion would still travel forward. You mean dead men tell no tales? Dead men tell no... Say, you're right! Well... But let's say you're in a situation where you are threatened with a firearm and do want to stop it from firing. Well, if you can get your finger in it, that guarantees you are at least going to lose your finger. The truth is, even the fanciest of techniques for disarming or disabling a firearm are all last-ditch, high-risk moves. If you did find yourself wrestling with someone and there's a firearm in play, you could stop it from firing by getting your hand in the way of the hammer of the firearm, if it has one. A hammer has to be able to drop down and strike a cartridge primer in order for a gun to fire. Again, this is not easy to pull off, outside, say, a large stationary cannon. On a pistol, the slide can be used. That's the moving part that runs the length of the top of a handgun. If this part is grabbed and moved back, even less than an inch in most cases, it won't fire. Or if you can maintain a grip on it, it'll prevent it from cycling new rounds. In reality, you can practice disarming techniques your whole life, but they'll always be a last resort, high risk move, as a trigger finger is faster than all but the speediest of superheroes. And if you do practice disarming techniques, please use rubber props. Fingers tend to get broken inside real trigger guards, and metal hammers and slides can really hurt. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this Firearms Brief. I wish you a safe and happy rest of your day. If you want to add anything, please do so in the comment section, and we'll see you next time. Get your finger out of the end of my gun. How dare you pull a gun on me? I said take your finger out of the end of my gun. Well, until I do, you better take your finger off that trigger.